Hello friends, welcome to my new tutorial series on data wrangling, the ultimate guide to data wrangling with Python Rust Porous Data Frame. This is a beginner's friendly series which covers from basic fundamentals to advanced data wrangling while working through some real life project. By end of this series, you'll have skills to apply this on any finance and supply chain data application. My name is Amish Shukla and you can find me on Twitter, GitHub and YouTube. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel. All the topics and examples discussed in this series is crucial in preparing finance and supply chain data for advanced analytics, visualization and predictive modeling using neural networks and machine learning. In this series, we are only going to focus on data wrangling while working through some real life data. These are the topics we are going to cover in this and follow up videos. We will start with the very basic fundamentals, we will learn about the finance and supply chain data models and we are going to start with basic creating polar data frame. Then we are going to learn about data types and advanced context and expression. We are also going to learn functions, USD and Windows function and transformation. So let's get started. Now if you are wondering why you should learn another data frame library when there are so many good data frame libraries are out there. These are some high level features why Rush Polar's data frame became top choice in developers community recently. Like automated parallelization, optimization etc etc. We are going to cover all of these topics in later videos when we jump on real code. All right. Before we jump onto the actual coding, I want to take one more minute to explain what we are going to achieve. This is a typical ERD that means Entity Relationship Diagram showing how finance data is stored in a typical RDBMS database and how chart fields like account, location, department define an organization structure. And while the table ledger, here is the actual bookkeeping transaction tables which keeps general entries like credit and debit balances associated with account and department etc. Now this is the data structure from which finance statements like balance sheet and cash flow and income statements are derived. Now in this video today we are going to create this exact structure and create this ERD structure using Polish data frame. Likewise let's review one more ERD from supply chain data perspective. This is very intuitive diagram and as you can imagine in real world customer picks item from certain product categories buys in from the vendor and after successfully receiving the product is obligated to pay to the vendor. Now all of these activities are recorded in a typical sales register or sometimes called purchase order. Now this is the actual ERD diagram and the tables we will be working with this and the follow up later video today. That's all the theory and the introduction I had to share with you before we start writing code. Now I assume at this point if you are still watching this you are interested in data wrangling with polars on finance and supply chain data set. So now without any delay let's jump onto the code now. Alright, so let's open your favorite code editor. In my case, I'm using VS Code and I'm going to create a new Jupyter Notebook. First thing you have to do, you have to select a kernel. Now kernel is the virtual environment. I always prefer to use a dedicated virtual environment because it helps me keep my required packages together, manage in one environment. Alright, so let's first install Polars, pip install Polars. Now because I'm running this inside Jupyter Notebook, I have to put an exclamation uh, sign in front of that. So now let's go install this pip install polars. Let me make it a little bit bigger. All right. So now if you see, uh, I already have this start. So it's saying like requirement already satisfied. Let me clear this out. Uh, fine. So now let's begin with some very basics understanding of data structure. So what is a data structure? Data structure is just a way to store data in computer memory. Now what is data type? The data type is something which defines what type of data structure is stored. So for example, uh, let's talk about, let's take an example a equals to 1. In this case, let's print it out. So as you can see, 1 is stored in somewhere in the computer memory. So now let's figure it out what kind of data type is used to store that uh, store that variable a. So as you can see, print type of var equals to type of a. If you run this, it will tell you that there's an integer equals to 1. Uh, it's attached to a variable called a and is stored somewhere in the computer memory. Now just, let's take another example, b equals to 1.1, 1 1.0. 1 Obviously, it's a float. So let's go type this out. If you run this, it will say type of variable b equals to float. All right, so let's make some more progress. Now let's say c equals to hello world. Obviously c is a string. So let's print it out. So as you guess, you, it will tell you the type of variable c equals to a string. Let's make some more progress and define a tuple. Now tuple is a data structure which allows you to keep immutable data, right? That means this data is not going to change. Now, if you want to keep a data which is going to change, so you can define a list. So let's define a list. So for example, you want to store a list of all the states, say California and Oregon. 
Now again, keep in mind that it allows you to update the data inside a list, and also you can have you can store different type of data types. So for example, you can store a, a string, and you can also store a float or other numeric values here. All right. So now let's go take it like you know. There's another data type, very useful data type, is called dictionary. Dictionary allows you to store um, data in the key and value format. So for example, a equals to one, b equals to three. And the reason I'm telling you all this because we are going to use all of these things in our Polus data frame later. So if you have more complex data requirement. Python obviously there are a lot of different packages. One very useful package is called Correction, and it allows you to you know uh, uh, it allows you to create more complicated such collections from this particular package. So for example, name tuple. As you can guess from the name, that name tuple is just another tuple, but here you can give a name to uh, that column of the tuple which you are storing. So, for example, in this case, I created a table um, equals to name tuple. That means like I am creating an instance of that particular call, class called name tuple. All right. So now, once you instantiate this particular instance, you will be able to directly access the value stored in that name tuple. All right. So far, we have reviewed few Python data structure and saw examples from collection package. Obviously, there are a lot more such uh, data types and data structure already out there. So, but let's do, go jump onto the Polar. Polar, similar to the list, Polar provide their own data structure to load data into rows and column tabular format. Now, why? Polar provides their own data structure because Polar is written in Rust and in the background is using Apache Arrow framework to store the data in column, uh, column format, and that's what actually makes it a little bit faster. So, uh, to make full use of Polar's data frame, it's very very important that you should use delivered Polar's data structure as much as possible. So, there are two data. For example, there are two data structure series and um, uh, and data frame. So, these are the two data structure we are going to review those in detail. Now, why series is so important? Because series, think about like you know when you are working for a table and you are working with rows and columns. So when you work uh, on one column at a time, when you do the data transformation and you are doing massive, massive data transformation, then it becomes very, very important that you are working with the delivered data structure which is delivered from the polars. So let's see this is an action import polars equals to PR, and here I am going to simply define a uh, location list. So list of all the location. Now let's go say create a series here. So location underscore one equals to pl dot series. And if you read the signature of this particular class series, the, as you can see, you can pass a list in this uh, in the series class, and it will just immediately create a polar series for you. Even though this works just fine, there's a problem with this syntax. So when you are going to create the data frame from the series, again, what is a data frame? Data frame is nothing but just a collection of the series. So when you create a data frame. This particular series will not have a column name. Once you see that in action, you, it will be more uh, evident to you. So, for example, let's go create another series, say location underscore two pl dot series. But here, the difference is I'm going to pass a name to that column along with the list what you have created. All right. So, as again, if you say location one and it doesn't have a name, location two has a name. Now, let's run this code. So, print location type of series one. Location one. So as you can see, this is series. But see the difference. There is no name. So uh, when the when the name field is there, it, there is a blank out there. Now similarly, if you print the location two, you will see the difference. So then ideal way of creating a series is please pass the name wherever applicable. And the, you will see why it's important. When you create a data frame from this from the series, then obviously you don't need to you know if you don't have a name. Then Polar will automatically assign some um, some random name to your column. So let's create a data frame df equals to pl dot data frame, and here I'm going to pass uh, those two series what we have just created. All right. Now let's go print this df here. Let me comment those two print statement so it becomes very clear. So comment this out. All right. Now let's go print df df. If I run this, see the difference between the two these two series. So location one, because when we created the location one series, we did not pass a name, so it has the column zero. That's a randomly assigned, uh, some randomly assigned column name here. Uh, let's go back to our general ledger ERD here. So we'll start with creating first chart field, say location. So these are the fields we are going to create. Now let's go create a valid data frame here. So here, so for example, I'm going to create a location data frame, uh, and I'm going to first import couple of packages here, say random and date time, and you will see why I'm doing that. 
um, because you know again so if you review that uh, we are going to create a uh, table which has all these fields into that particular data frame here. the very first field we will need is an id field mm -hmm. that's the field which makes a particular row unique so let's go create a say location equals to pl dot data frame here and inside that data frame we are going to create couple of the fields here first field is an id now because we need a unique list of values here uh, let's use the range function so if you say range 11 to 23 and uh, let's go run this code so the range is again a function it takes two different values here a start and a stop and it generates the list of the values so for example if you run this now let's go list it out so you will see that it generates uh, 12 different um, different numbers so for starting from 11 all the way to 22 so again what this is going to do is going to create a list of all the id fields here now let's use another field called as of date so if you recall that's the reason i created you know uh, i imported the date time package here so as you can see for example we are creating all these locations which are identified by the unique id values here and as of date it could be any date now let's go give some because we have 12 different ids here so for example we want to create 12 different location so now let's give um, some names to this location say boston new york philadelphia and we need 12 of these values here so again when you if you if you put that in your excel file it's going to look like id as of date and your description of that particular location so same thing so for example you can divide you know couple of location belong to couple of the reasons so for example you can divide it by say east coast or west coast whatever the reason we are just i'm just using an example here saying you know reason a b c now the reason because we have 12 different values here uh, so we need to have 12 different regions so for example here if i have reason a b c d there's only four so i'm going to multiply it by three what is going to do is going to repeat those things um you know three more times so once you see that let's go paste it out so as you can see reason a b c d and it's repeated two more times here all right so that will you know it will generate 12 different not uh, unique uh, different values here but 12 different reasons out there now similarly let's go create one more field here say type equals to physical uh, because these are physical location again totally depend on your requirement what kind of uh, data you want to store in your location data frame so now let's go run this so once you see that in data frame so this very much now if you look at this code it produces a table kind of a structure now literally if you look at some rdbms that's how these chart fields called location or account are stored inside that database let's review one more function from polars library here with row count now what this does this is not same as the unique id field here this is just if you want to put a serial number to your records you can use this thing here so if you say with row count and you give a row number, it will just put a serial number in front of each rows here. All right. So that's how, you know, um, so we have created a location data frame successfully. Now here, as you can see, there are 12 different locations and we can create as many as we want. Let's go back to our general ledger ERD and now let's go uh, work on another dimension, another chart field called account. So very similar to the location, we are going to, you know, create a account data frame here. Similarly, um, just import those random package and date time package here. We are not using random right now, but you will see that we are going to use that later, how we are going to use that later. Similarly, an account, we have, uh, suppose you want to create, say, 1,000 different accounts, or 35, um, say, 35 different accounts here. Again, you can, you can be creative, generate as many different accounts as you want. So in later, like, you know, part, I will show you, we are going to create millions and millions of rows here. Similarly, I'm going to create a couple of different type of accounts, which are of type operating expenses, non-operating expenses, asset liabilities network. Again, I'm, I'm using these words just to simulate the actual general ledger architecture here. Similarly, we are going to, you know, divide those accounts in different regions. Um, again, please ignore this if you don't want to use this. So again, put some type here, say expenses, expenses, asset liability and net worth. All right, so say multiplied by five, start as equity active, put some classification out there. Please, you know, depending your business requirement, depending on your particular database, please be creative and make it like, you know, make it more look like your RDBMS data structure here. Let's define a couple of more fields here. So travel expenses and again because the data i think length of this id is 35 so we have to you know pass at least you know make sure that all the columns they generate at least 35 different values otherwise this is not going to work so now let's go similarly account sample 
and if you want um, see uh, if, you, if you want to display the row number just include the with row count here all right so now we have got our account dimension account chart field ready as well all right so now let's go back to our uid one more time here and let's go create one more data frame called department data frame similar to a location like likewise account and dimension account dimension and uh, um, location we are going to create a department as well so right, i'm just going to fast forward and here as you can see i created a couple of the departments here so now is the time to put all this thing together so all of these things all of these things are chart fields they go inside your uh, ledger data frame so we have created accounts as you can see accounts look like this so now let's go put out a shape here so as you can see we have 35 different accounts we have created let's go display the department shape so shape allows you to display the number of columns and rows rows and columns inside your data frame here so let's say location dot shape so as you can see there are 35 different accounts 15 different department and 12 different location here now we are going to create the actual transaction uh, register which is like ledger so ledger is where all these things will come together now obviously in actual uh, rdbms what happens you don't want to pre, you know uh, store all of the different values from the account you just stored one number similarly you one number which represent a particular location so here you know, let, let's go create 100000 different ledger entries here Let's create some more static fields like organization name, physical year, accounting period, etc. So organization name is actually the name of your organization. I'm just using an example, say ABC. Ledger type equals to actuals. There are different type of um, ledger types without going into the too much detail. Let's stick with one ledger, say actuals. Now, let's say physical year. Suppose you want to create this data from a range of years. So from 2020 or last three years of the data. Let's create this data frame and start passing these values one at a time. So ledger equals to ledger type. So again, okay, the first field is equals to ledger, which is ledger type plus uh, pass organization. So org equals to org, physical year. Now we want to generate, we want to pick a particular value. So random dot choices. So random dot choices, what this function does, if you pass a range of the values, is going to pick the samples um, of the size. So here, as you can see, I'm passing say 2022 to 23, and one is actually the, uh, you know, the, the k equals to the sample size. So from this range, from 2022 to 2023, I want to pick this number of samples. So let's run this. Once you run this in a different cell, it will be more clear to you. So sample size, first let's, let's define these variables here. So for example, say sample size equals to 10. So I, again, from this set of values from 2022 to 2023, we have to define the variables here, physical year from and to. From this set of values, let's generate n number of samples here. So physical year from equals to 2020. Let's define physical year 2 equals to 2023. All right. So now if you run this, it generates, as you can see, from this, from and to, from this list of the values, we are generating 10 different values here. So similarly, we are going to use the random.choice function on the period. So here from accounting period from January till December, we are going to generate a number of samples here. Now we can apply the similar logic on the given data frame. So we are going to take accounts data frame. So again, we have, as you saw, we have created like 35 different accounts previously. So from this list of 35 different accounts, we want to create uh, 10,000 different samples. So, you know, these are random samples, but again, it's just going to, what random not choices does, it will pick only the account IDs which exist from that particular account data frame here. So similarly, let's go copy paste this uh, and do it for department and location as well. So now we have got all the charts with account, depart, location. Let's go put some dollar amount as well. And here we can just use the random dot, uh, any random number here. So random dot sample and say, give it a range, say, you know, 1 million or whatever. Okay, sample size. So it's going to generate 100,000 different account uh, random numbers from that random, from that particular range. Now, if you display this, you will see we just created 100,000 different ledger accounting entries, which very much look like an RDBMS database. So this is exactly what I wanted to achieve in this video today. So far, we have created very simple, uh, all the GL tables here in Polar data frame. Now, in follow-up videos, we'll create more complex data transformation, and we are going to see how to perform data analytics, how to perform data wrangling operation on this data set. That's all I wanted to cover in this video today. Please stay tuned and enable notification for upcoming blogs. Thank you.